Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning in to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is we're gonna be talking about creek fishing for trout with these little buggers, mini pink worms. So if you wanna learn how to do that, stay tuned. But before we do that, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to tap that little subscribe button down here. What we like to do is educate, entertain, and inspire. So you're gonna find lots of educational content, but you're also gonna find a lot of entertaining and fun stuff where we're just traveling around the world bringing you along on our journey. So if you love fishing, tap subscribe. Coming up next, we're gonna teach you how to use pink worms for trout in small creeks and rivers. All right, addicts, so first we're gonna start off with the rod here. I like to definitely use a shorter rod because when you're hiking around in the brush and stuff, you don't want a big, long, cumbersome rod because it's gonna get in your way. You're not gonna be able to maneuver through the brush as you're hiking up and down the creeks. Also, a lot of these trout that you may be targeting aren't that big, so they're just fun to fight on a nice ultralight. So I have a six foot Okuma Salilo rod and then I paired it with a 3000 Okuma reel. The next thing I've done is I am fishing a braided line. And a reason I like a braided line, especially for this technique that we're teaching you today, is it floats. You want your line to float when you're fishing these float setups down the creek so you can present a lot more natural presentation. But one thing you always do with your braided line is you're gonna wanna put a bumper on there. And what I'm talking about is just a piece of leader, fluorocarbon or mono, attached to the braid to make your presentation more stealthy. So let's do that real quick. So what I've done here is I've used a double uni knot to attach fluorocarbon and then when you pull your leader off there, you want to pull off as much as you think you're going to need for the depth of the holes you're going to be fishing. So I know I'm not going to be fishing anything today that's over four feet, so I'm just going to pull off a nice good arm's length there, call it good. Arms to arm, that's all we need. Take our Gerber scissors, trusty scissors here and cut this off. All right, so the next thing you're gonna need is your float. And in this application, this small creek fishing, I'm gonna use a fixed float. So any float that you can fix on your line that you can slide up and down easily, that's what you're gonna wanna go with. This is our Mustad Addicted Fixed Float. I really like these floats. We designed them kind of for small creek and small rivers and fixed float fishing because it has a, a weight system on it. So basically you can take the weights off and on and adjust your depth of your float as far as in the water column so you can track your presentation down the water correctly and get a nice perfect presentation that you can trick these fish with. So these work really, really easily as well and that's the other reason we designed them. You just have a piece of surgical tubing at the top here and then you're gonna wet that top of the float with some saliva or water or whatever. You're gonna put that first piece of surgical tubing on there and then we have this hole here and what this hole does is if for some reason your top and your bottom surgical tubing breaks, you're still gonna have your float. You're not gonna lose it because it's gonna be sliding freely on the line, which these surgical tubing will, will wear out and so you will lose them sometimes if you're not careful. So you put that line through there like so. Take your other piece of surgical tubing, put it on your line here. Again, wet it, slide that surgical tubing up, and there you go. Now your float is affixed to the line. You can easily slide it up and down and adjust on the fly. That's what makes fixed float fishing so effective, especially if you're tromping up and down a creek. You can adjust very, very quickly. Slide it up, slide it down per hole on a very, very quick basis. So the next step is the business end. Now, the way these little worms work is the, the way I like to fish them is on a jig head. So what we have here is a 16th ounce jig head. It's a white pearl mustad jig head. And basically what we're doing here is we're taking our pink worm and we're just gonna thread that on there. And now if you guys are steelhead fishermen like I am, it's the same concept. You're just threading it right down the center of the line here. about like that. And then what you're gonna do is pop that end of that hook out of that worm and slide that worm up the shank like so. And then I'll, I'll sometimes pull on the worm a little bit to adjust it. And there you go. Now you're fishing. All right, so now that I got my worm rigged on the jig head here, I am going to tie it on here with just a standard fisherman's knot. Six, seven wraps here. Right back through there. 
Wet your knot, always wet your knot with fluorocarbon. Super, super important. You don't want that line to burn on itself. We're gonna snug that thing down there. And then I'm gonna cut that tag end off. And one thing I always like to mention for everyone out there is if you are cutting your tag ends off, do it in your bag, do it in the garbage, do it somewhere that's not on the riverbank. I'm gonna let that just fall down in the bag there. And here we have it, folks. We are fishing. And this little setup right here, if you have any creeks, any rivers, any little streams where you live, where trout reside, this setup right here will be deadly. Deadly, deadly, deadly. So let me show you. So basically, I'm gonna kinda guess what my depth is here. I'm gonna just say it's right there. And what I always like to do when I'm fishing these, especially in these scenarios, is I like to start in close and work my way out. You never know if there's gonna be fish right here on this inside. And what you're gonna notice is if your presentation is fishing correctly and perfectly, your bobber's gonna be straight up and down. So we're gonna cast this up there, like so. And there you go. See how the current starts to float that down? Oh yeah. That's juicy. That's juicy. Then you're gonna let the current do its thing. Pull some braid off there. You're gonna extend that, that drift out as far as you can. You're gonna wanna extend that drift out as far as you can to get the right presentation. So after you've made your first cast in close, just keep working your way across the current. And the key is line control. So you wanna just make sure that once you cast that out there, keep your line off the water. Let that float kind of float down naturally through that water. Just like that. You can see right when it hit into the bucket, that float went straight up and down. It was floating perfectly. Flip your bail, extend that drift out. Just let that go down through there. Oh, that was a fish! Did you see that? Oh my God, I just lost a cutthroat. That was a nice one too, Sean. Oh my gosh. Addicts, it's working. You see that? It's working. Let's run it back through there. I didn't get a good hook set on him, Sean. I saw him roll before I actually hooked him. Dang it. All right. That was a nice cut through. I mean, that was probably 16 inches. I'm excited, Alex, because it's been a while since I've caught cutthroat in this creek. And so let's see if we can hook some more. But let me keep educating you guys here. You can see the key is get it up into the current let it drop down into that bucket, and then you want it to float down the, down the pipeline as natural as possible. That is the key. And you don't want anything on your line here like grasses blades. The other thing I like to do a lot is I'll, what I call caulking my jig. And what I'll do is I'll take this fluorocarbon and I'll bring it back towards the point of the hook and I'll snug that thing down like so. So when your presentation hits the water, it's floating like that. That's what's gonna look the most natural to the fish. Let's get another one on this inside where that fish was living, see if any of his buddies are hanging out in there. He was right in there, guys. The, the float went down, Sean, like right there. And I thought it was bottom, because it started dragging a little bit, and then it just drained. So I honestly thought it was bottom. But as you guys could see, I don't know if Sean was kind of zoomed in on that float a little bit, but that's the key is you want that thing kind of doing its, getting its straight up and down action. So cast it out there, hold your braid up off the water. Let that float float down the creek like so. And then, at, oh, look at it just drop nicely in that bucket. Nicely. So another thing you can do, sh show them over here by these logs, Sean. So you guys can see how it's kind of back eddying and boiling in there. That's a great spot to put your stuff. So I like to get my presentation just right over in that boil. A lot of times those trout will sit over in that stuff. And see how I'm holding my line off the water so you can really get that fishing in there good. And then if it's gonna hit shore, I'll pull it out. Ex extend that thing down. That was bottom, I think. Set the hook on those ones though. That was my problem, Addicts, on that last fish. One thing that Cameron had taught me a long time ago is hook sets are free. So if your bobber goes under, set the hook. 
Do not just be like, oh, well, that could have been bottom, because chances are it's gonna happen just like happened to me, and it ain't gonna be bottom. All right, everyone, follow us down the bank here. We're gonna show you some other just types of water and see if we can actually hook one here. We actually just need to hook one and land it, not hook and lose it. So as you can see, it came down the current right there, but then it's deepened it out in here into another nice little bucket. So we're gonna, I always try to stay back too. Be very stealthy when you're on these creeks. Don't, don't be walking straight right up on them. Ooh. Look at that's floating through there nicely. Where are these trout at, boys? So, I went through there that one time and I did not tap bottom at all. So what I'm gonna do on my next cast is I'm gonna adjust that float up. I'm gonna slide it up, give myself some more depth there just so I can make sure I'm right into that fish's face, right into the strike zone. You always wanna be within, you know, six, eight inches of him. If it's too far away from him, chances are he ain't gonna move to go get it. You know, some of these fish will, but, ooh, that's a deep little bucket in there. See, we're tapping bottom there. That's the nice thing about these addicted balsa floats, is you can, I mean, you see everything. You see every time it hits a rock, a ledge, a stick, it just really registers it well. I'm gonna work this hole over really nicely, especially because that cut that was up in that other hole, see if we can find his brothers or sisters, or grandpa, one of those two I'll take. So it's even deeper, I think, in there then. I'm gonna go even a little deeper. And sometimes it's okay to drag at the top end and just let it fall down into the hole. Sometimes that's the way to do it. Okay, so there you can see now I'm dragging a little bit. See how that bobber, Sean, can you tell on the camera how that bobber's kind of float, turning and facing down river like that? That's how you know and you can see, boom, I got snagged right there. So that's how you know that you're just a little too deep. So at that point, now that I know that, I'm gonna bring this thing back down. We have good water clarity. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it back down a few inches and I think that's gonna be right in the zone where those fish would be. Right on the wall, right underneath that tree. Come on, baby. Bottom fish. Down river, let's go find a new hole. All right, so now we've walked down river even more and we've come to some really shallow riffly stuff. And I think just because this creek's so small, these fish could be sitting in this shallow riffly stuff. So I'm gonna, again, what makes this presentation and setup so nice is look at that. I just quickly on the fly adjusted this down to maybe eight, 10 inches at the most. And that's what makes this presentation so effective. We can now fish this riffly water quickly and on the fly. I hope there's some trout hanging out in there. Some biters. All right, everyone, so I've been working my way down the creek. Haven't found anything yet, but I thought we got to this deep hole. It's a good opportunity to show you guys again. Now that I know this hole is a lot deeper, look how easily I can extend that out. And boom, now I'm fishing a lot deeper depth. So again, I can't stress enough how easy and nice it is when you're fishing a fixed float setup on these small creeks. Fish, steelhead, or something. I don't know what it is, but it's not small. Fish on. Does not feel small on this. It could be like a sucker or something too, who knows? There's a bunch of random weird stuff in here. Oh, it looked like a sucker or something, did you see it? It's a fish though, I'll take it. All right, not the target species, but there he is, Mr. Sucker Fish, on the old pink worm setup. It was a, it was a valiant fight on that ultralight, let me tell you. Get going, buddy. All right, everyone, so there you have it. I hope you learned a lot today. I promise you, you put this to work on any of your local trout streams, creeks, rivers, 
It's a deadly, deadly tactic. We were only able to hook one trout today and then I got a sucker fish, which is not the target species. But go put it to work on your local rivers and streams. Let me know how you guys do. Thanks again so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. And don't forget, please smash that thumbs up button. It really helps us a lot. We'll see you guys on the next tutorial and we'll see you guys on the river.